I think I can do it. No, I think I do it. Okay. No, I think I do it. Okay. okay. Um, so yeah, so following on uh, that great discussion there, um, I just wanted to give you guys sort of an, an ad, if you will, for the kind of stuff that we're doing here. Um, this is uh, a proposal for something that I can't actually officially share with you, so I won't officially share because it's all the bureaucracy. We love bureaucracy. It's going through the middle of our university um, process to establish a center, but hopefully soon. January-ish kind of time, it'll be, it'll be official and ready and we can announce it, but this is essentially our mechanism to try to better partner with you all, um, both for uh, training as well as for collaboration and development and all that kind of stuff. So this is our consortium for um, all this great technology. That, As we all know, we have problems with FAA clearances, we have problems with a whole host of um, of challenges, and so this is one of our responses to some of that, which would be um, to uh, bring folks into the umbrella of the university, so we can partner and we can collaborate with you guys, use your technology, you could use ours, et cetera, and have everything be um, above boards and, and legal and all that kind of kind of good stuff. So, so um, we're we're the opposite end of our great colleagues at NOAA. So we have no money. My lab has no money, and so everything we just about everything we build is is um, made ourselves or tweaked ourselves from default stuff. So, so we take the approach of um, trying to answer various environmental questions, and we figure out what data we need, and we build platforms or adapt platforms around it. So, for example, this stuff you're seeing right here. These, this is the package. These are the packages that we um, took to the Cook Islands. We just got back um, about mm, eight weeks or so ago, nine weeks or so ago. So it was a university class. And with this, we were doing very much the same kind of things as these guys were doing in the northern Hawaiian uh, archipelago. Um, we were um, working on an atoll, an almost atoll called Aitutaki, and we were, we were testing, this first year was more the testing of the viability of this will this work. So we have underwater units. The thing up there on the left is an open ROV. That off the shelf is about 850 bucks, and we tweak it. So after we're done with it, it's about $2,000, and that has about a 30-meter uh, depth range and probably a lot more if we have longer cables and stuff like that, so we can go underwater. Um, then we have uh, some things that are commercial uh, platforms that I'm sure you guys are familiar with, like the guy on the right up there is an Inspire, DJI Inspire, um, using that for mapping. And then, uh, for example, the, the fixed wing right in front, which is um, built around a Pix, uh, PixHawk uh, 3DR um, brain, and we use that for mapping also in the coastal zone. So, uh, you know, so some things are, are commercial, some things are, are hand-built, others are, are tweaked, and so that's, that's our range of, of exciting toys here. Um, we think, uh, not, not trying to do this, but just we've sort of stumbled into this arena, um, that we, there's a lot of unique things that we have going on here that I thought were going on at all our, my, my sister campuses and, and friends elsewhere, and in, in meetings with folks over the last couple of years, it's become clear that um, we have a lot of unique advantages that other folks do not have. First and foremost are policies, and I have a slide on it later, but um, the short version is we actually have the only policy in the CSU system, and um, that's now being replicated and actually required of other CSUs to follow uh, our policy uh, lead, and actually other universities are now um, uh, emulating our, our policies to deal with this kind of stuff. And it, and it all started with when the president was talking, there was that that fixed wing that was up there that you guys know, at least some of you know a lot about. And, you know, a couple years ago when, when um, our great association here was being formed and there was some talk, hey, maybe we can get the university to, you know, we can donate some equipment. And when that, when that UAV was, was um, offered to us, the, the initial thought was, no, we shouldn't take it because these things are dangerous and they might be bad. And that led us down a path of, um, reassuring the administration and, and the uh, legal teams and stuff like that that no, we're not going to spy on people and this and that. And so they basically said, so prove it. So we created this policy which seems super asinine. And I'm sure you guys know all about this kind of stuff. How, 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 how dumb is this? Do we have to really say this? But we did. That if we fly over somebody at the beach and accidentally take their picture, that we will delete the data, um, things of that you nature. Got that from us. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And, and, um, and so, it, it, uh, you know, I, I, again, I, I thought that we were very much behind the curve and that everyone had been creating these policies to assure we wouldn't be spying on people, that we would have um, all the appropriate uh, controls in place. And it turns out a lot of people just did not have that stuff. So, 
So we have some unique policies, and then we have some unique facilities here, given that, for example, we have a research station out on the Channel Islands, a ter terrestrial area out on the Channel Islands. We have things like, uh, this picture here is our, our first uh, remotely piloted systems class, which is a barn out, in the, uh, out on campus. Um, so if you guys don't know the history of this place, this was obviously a mental uh, hospital, and some people think it still is. Um, and uh, so when they built it back in the day, they didn't have anything, right? They had to generate their own power, their own food, et cetera. So, so Cam Park, what a lot of you guys know is Cam Park, when you drove in uh, over the uh, river there, um, was essentially one of the first food producing areas for campus so that they could, they could feed the patients their, their own um, own food and stuff, and so, so one of the remnant structures there is this abandoned barn, and that's awesome because that's quote unquote indoor, right? So that's pretty cool. So we have stuff like that. Um, and then of course we have all kinds of wonderful partnerships. We'd love to have more with you guys, but for example, our partners at NOAA have been great, Navy, uh, uh, all kinds of stuff that, um, again, I thought everybody had these, but it turns out not a whole lot of people do. And then of course we have a tremendous talent pool. So a lot of people in the back row back there are my students that are trying to hide or be quiet or something like that. They are super awesome. They include, folk, they include uh, folks that build UAVs on their own. They include folks who used to work for technical racing teams, all kinds of great stuff that really bring a tremendous amount. So I break everything. I look at stuff and it falls out. What did I do? And then they ask me what I did and I don't know. And so they fix everything. So it's an incredible talent pool. And the next, the next thing that we have here which um, I think you guys have tapped into, is this notion that we really have an educational focus. My previous universities were all research universities. Um, we first and foremost think of the educational opportunity and the training opportunity, and then we do a bunch of great research, but that's our first step, and that actually turns out to be different from um, a lot of uh, the stuff. So, whereas a lot of my colleagues at, at uh, our, our fellow universities are doing wonderful stuff with aeronautics and, and swarm programming and all this really cool stuff, um, we don't care about any of them. I mean, I'm not supposed to say that, but, but we don't really care about that so much, right? We want to go collect the data. So it's whatever tools we can use, and if we can use that stuff, great. If we have to develop it, great. If we can get it off the shelf, great. Oh, we use a lot of open source stuff. And so, so this educational focus really, in a sense, um, is, is, is freeing for us. We're not constrained to some of the traditional boundaries that other folks are. When we do research, our, almost all of our research, at least in my lab, is applied. So we have very much applied focus trying to get data into the hands of decision makers, which again is a, a little bit different. And then we're, we're very interdisciplinary. One of the things this campus is, is um, one of our hallmarks is this notion of interdisciplinarity. And so here's a small example of that. So every year we do um, opinion polling. And if you ask most people, they would say, this is not how you do this. Nobody's doing this anymore. Almost all the opinion polls that you read are done electronically. So they're done uh, through um, cell, uh, uh, outreach through telephony, through, through cell phones, or they're done on the web. We do all our stuff face to face. So this is the old school stuff that you would never traditionally do because it's too expensive, but we have students, so it's cheap. So, so in this case, we, every, every um, fall, we do somewhere between 1,000 and 1,500 in-person surveys from Santa Barbara, Ventura, and northern LA counties. And in this case, this is a class that we look at coastal management. But, for example, uh, we're, we're just in the middle of finishing up this year's survey, but, but last year's survey was the first time we decided to insert a question specifically about drones, and this is what you get. And we found similar things when we do work uh, online and, and, and other mechanisms. But, so we basically said, hey, how do you feel about small, uh, you know, privately operated uh, UAVs, you know, flying around? And so what you get is, uh, what you get here, which is that um, if you add up all the negative versus the positive thoughts, the negative outweigh that two to one, so not surprising. But what I would say is much more important than that is the number of people that are neutral or unsure. That's two thirds of the population. So as we go forward in the next couple years, uh, all of you and, and we have a great responsibility. We can really shift this. this the, the ground is not settled despite what, what some would have you believe. And the public really are amenable to, to hearing about the upsides of this technology, even though mostly they hear about the negative stuff. So we're in a position to actually, we're interested in that as well, not just the flying and the collecting data, but actually how is this technology being perceived? How can we better inform uh, the public and what can we do to make sure that we're not um, getting anybody angry? I mentioned before that we have um, 
uh, this policy, that's our policy, is now being copied and required throughout the, the system. But really what we do is we, we straight up confront these things and we, we talk about them. We blog about them. And so a lot of our partnerships come through our blog. People find out about us. And the Cook Islands, I mentioned, it was we were joined by folks from Oregon State and from uh, Plymouth Marine Lab. The guys in Plymouth Marine Lab contacted my students because they knew they could fix their robots. They broke all their robots and they couldn't make them work. And so our students talked them through fixing their robots, and then they joined us, and we, we hooked up technology that had not, had not seen each other, and we, made some, uh, we did some neat stuff out in the field. Um, uh, again, we're mostly interested in collecting environmental data for managers. In this case, this is our aquatic unit, and this is a couple of my students uh, out on a little inflatable out in the Channel Islands. In this case, they were looking at uh, the efficacy of marine protected areas, so we do that kind of stuff. Um, we do, I, I have very psychedelic fonts, this is great, I like this, I can barely, you guys can maybe read this. So this is, this is a, another example of the oil spill, or Fukio oil spill, we were, uh, we monitored about, uh, spent about two months looking at oil spill effects up and down the coast. Um, one aspect of that was this guy, so this is a little pelican case with a couple of those, those cheap open ROVs, those cheap underwater tools. So we think this should be in the go kit for all the oil spill response stuff. So these are small, very light, right, little shoebox size thing. Again, tweaked out with all the bells and whistles like we have with GoPro cameras and stuff. It's, you're talking about, you know, 2,000-ish bucks. And so, and, and very easy to operate. We can train anyone in a day or a couple days how to use this. And we believe these should be in the kits right alongside the beekeeper suits and, 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 and everything else that we have. Um, because they are so small and you can get so much great data, there's a lot of controversy, there's a lot of people upset about is oil being deposited or not subsurface. And with this, you can collect this stuff, right? You can record it. It can be there for legal issues, good, bad. And um, so that kind of technology is, is sort of what we're interested in. Um, this is some, some data from the Cook Islands. In addition to just uh, collecting uh, uh, applied data and working with local villagers and, and trying to help them understand their environment, we also piloted the first ever use of this uh, particular wavelength of UV light. And what you're seeing there on the, on the left is a coral fluorescing, which people knew that coral fluoresced, but it turns out we can automate, the, we think now we can automate this and use this as an autonomous way to count the number of invertebrates on a reef. But then also in the middle there, which what look ruby red are giant clams. And so no one had ever shown that these guys fluoresce and uh, this was really cool. So our colleague in, in the UK is writing a paper about this. So even just very basic use with this technology can produce academic insights and, uh, and neat stuff. Uh, then we do a lot of technology vetting. Um, we've been funded by NOAA in the past, and we still are, which is great, to do not just basic research, but also educational outreach. So what my students back there do, the, the more advanced students teach the naive students, the naive students uh, get up to speed, and then we go and work with high schools, middle schools, et cetera, about this type of technology. And so down on the left, you see uh, Paul, our, our lead technician, our, our head tech, uh, working with uh, um, one of our local schools. Uh, up on the upper left, you see one of our students flying, and we have no money, so that's a welding helmet. That's our 3D, that's our virtual, uh, our 3D experience. Um, but then, uh, because of partnerships, we do, and we'd love to have more of these with you guys, we have access to certain technology. That's a, there's a FLIR camera on a unit that's pointing down that, that's showing that infrared image uh, on the other left side. Uh, this was our, one of our first mapping uh, endeavors right here on the island of Aitutaki. This is one of the low-res uh, PIX4D um, maps that are being generated th through that. All kinds of good stuff. Um, we're always in the field. We're very much a field-based entity, and so this is our, our field lab on the top of our... It's not as nice as the tent. I wish we had a nice tent, but this is on our, our, our veranda of our hotel um, with too many things that make the FAA angry at us when we fly on planes. Um, and uh, the other thing, to, the last thing to say is that we were really, we've been bursting at the seams. So to be clear, I'm not an engineer. I'm a, I'm a ecologist by training. Um, and so all this stuff was going on next to my dead owls and my roadkill and our toxicity assays and all this and that. We just a couple, uh, two months ago, opened our brand new lab. If you guys have a chance, you should take a walk over to Sierra, the Sierra Hall. Um, uh, computer science is in there. They have a great new embedded systems lab, all kinds of good robotics lab. Um, and so now, um, while my lab is always that messy, now there's much more space. And so we have some, we have, uh, you know, some 3D, we have 3D printers, we have uh, great storage, we have a whole space now that's just dedicated to the creation and, 
and, and servicing of these units. And so um, that's what we're doing here. I'd uh, love to talk with you guys more. Unfortunately, my wife is out at our research station right now, so I have to leave sort of early to grab my son from school, so I can't stay here to the very end of the meeting. But um, we'd love to talk with you guys more. And again, around January, we'll be ready, hopefully, to invite uh, all of you guys, either as, as your entity, your business, your consulting firm, your agency, or individually, if you guys are interested in partnering with this, with this consortium, this umbrella entity, to hopefully facilitate uh, more testing, get you guys more places where you can test, evaluate stuff. And we're also hoping to start a spring demo out, uh, out and around in some of our sites both for all of you, but then also the general public, at least a half day for the general public to try to ease some of their concerns with, with this technology. And so with that, I will uh, shut up and be quiet and ask if you guys have any questions. Thanks, you guys.